Hi, I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. So we've talked a lot about rebel fighters in the last couple weeks, so I figured today was a good time to talk about the other side of the Galactic Civil War. That's right, we're going to talk about TIE Fighters. Specifically, why the Empire actually might have made the right decision choosing the TIE Fighter over something like an X-Wing. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. Now I know what you're thinking, the TIE Fighter is an objectively worse fighter, and I will get to that in a sec. But first, let's talk about the flaws of the TIE Fighter. First off, it doesn't have any shields, which really limits its survivability in combat. A few shots from an X-Wing is all it would take to decimate a TIE Fighter. This combined with the fact that there's no real armor anywhere on the vehicle means it's a pretty flimsy space frame. When it comes to weapons, the TIE Fighter is also generally pretty underpowered, basically being armed with two small laser cannons. And the TIE Fighter lacks a hyperdrive. This seriously limits its range, forcing it to be tied to either an Imperial base or a capital ship. Also to note that there is no life support system in the TIE Fighter, so the pilot has to wear a pressurized suit. That doesn't necessarily affect the performance of the fighter, but definitely would make it uncomfortable for the pilot. It wouldn't be fair for me to mention those without mentioning the two big advantages the TIE Fighter has. Due to the TIE Fighter's lightweight, thanks to the fact that it has no armor, it is relatively maneuverable and pretty fast. TIE Fighters were faster than their main competition, the X-Wing, and could turn a little bit better than them. And maybe most significantly is its cost. The TIE Fighter is significantly cheaper than an X-Wing. Orders of magnitude cheaper and simpler to build than an X-Wing. That is where the TIE Fighter's main advantage comes in. You see, TIE Fighters weren't made for one-on-one -on -one engagements with Rebel Fighters, they were made for swarm tactics. Something that the Empire uniquely was capable of. You see, unlike the Rebel Alliance, in most situations, the Empire has the numbers advantage. They have the entire population of the galaxy as potential recruits and potential new TIE Fighter pilots. They could put a lot more people into Starfighters than the Rebel Alliance could. And thanks to the TIE Fighter being cheaper, they could manufacture a lot more of them. As a result, they could use swarm tactics to completely overwhelm small squadrons of rebel starfighters. I don't care how superior your fighter is in a one-on-one -on -one fight, if it's two X-Wings versus 25 TIE Fighters, I'm putting my money on the TIE Fighters. A fighter like the X-Wing, which is expensive to produce and costly to maintain, wouldn't have really fit in well with one of the Empire's big advantages, which is manpower. In fact, elements of the strategy the Empire was using negated most of the flaws of the TIE Fighter. For example, its lack of a hyperdrive would be a problem were they trying to run hit-and-run attacks like the Rebel Alliance. However, in most fights, the Empire was on the defensive defending against a hit-and-run attack. With the Empire on the defensive, it isn't really necessary for their fighters to have hyperdrives. Simply keep them garrisoned at a base, and when the Rebels attack, you launch the fighters from the base. And when the Empire went on the offensive, you better believe they were doing it with Imperial-class Star Destroyers. Imperial-class Star Destroyers that could carry these TIE Fighters through hyperspace to their target. Not to mention the psychological aspects of the TIE Fighter. Its loud ion engines and its distinctive cannons have a very specific sound that became an icon of the Empire. The sound of a TIE Fighter flying over your village sounds very different from basically anything else. This makes the TIE Fighter a pretty good fit for the Tarkin Doctrine, which basically defined almost all Imperial military spending before the Galactic Civil War. So I'm not surprised the Empire chose the TIE Fighter over the X-Wing. It just fits their strategy better, and it plays off their strengths. However, the X-Wing fell into the hands of the Rebel Alliance. If you want to learn how the Rebels got their hands on the TIE Fighter's arch nemesis, the iconic X-Wing, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to tell me down below in the comments if you were in the position of an Imperial leader choosing which fighter to use if you would have chosen the TIE Fighter or would have opted for something more like an X-Wing. And if you enjoyed this video or just want more sci-fi discussions, head down below and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.